So for our non-corridor approaches, uh, so I've got scratched out here, some of the things that aren't in really included, uh, the ones that are scratched out actually are what would be included in our corridor design. So outside of the corridor, we can use uh, complex geometry. That's gonna be in 2D and 3D terrain models, placing linear templates, applying surface templates, um, we have civil cells that are delivered or they can be developed um, and then using linear geometry and 3D linear geometry and essentially really just using graphical elements. Okay, so these are just, a, a, of course, not a comprehensive list of everything that can be used, but these are some of the scenarios where we may would want to use a non-corridor approach. So uh, I'm going to start off on the site side of things and I'm going to place and show how we can create uh, some ponds. And we're just going to use some graphical elements. We're going to create those elements. So we'll analyze our model, create some elements, rule elements to one another, and start to build those 3D elements to create a terrain model. And um, so this is just doing basic CAD work. Okay, so I have two different scenarios there. I'll do a simple pond, and we'll do a stormwater management pond. Um, and then we'll swap over and touch on doing that bridge embankment to tie in applying a linear template. And one of the reasons why we kind of show these is because they are the bridge embankments is one of the most answered or one, one of the most asked questions that we get. Just kind of how to model around the end of a corridor or how to do those type of additional detail things to our corridors. And then for the ponds. It just kind of allows us to show how we can build and rule elements to one another. And even though we're building these elements and ruling them to each other for a pond where we're going down, it, the same concepts apply for creating medians, crossovers, and islands, um, you know, creating offsets and tapers, tying them together, applying our profiles, all that type of thing. So that's why we kind of picked those real, I guess, um, these types of scenarios to, to kind of show you. So kind of going across the top of uh, Open Rose Designer here, I've just kind of picked out some of the, the most common tools that we get questions about, whether it being creating graphical filters, creating a terrain model from, from elements, creating it from those graphics, uh, editing terrain models, changing feature types. Um, so maybe we have a break line and we need it to be a void or we need it to be a boundary and creating complex models. And then moving into geometry, you know, creating 2D geometry, working in our 2D model, creating a profile, setting that profile active, and that gives us a 3D element. Okay, and then that element we can build on it. You know, we can use uh, the horizontal geometry to, to do all that information. Like I said, a lot of this stuff I'll kind of demonstrate as I'm going through the process of kind of laying these things out. Um, and then, of course, creating our vertical geometry with our profiles. Um, model detailing, uh, we have civil cells that we can place. Again, linear templates, um, we'll place a linear template. Uh, we'll have surface templates. Um, one of the ponds, uh, I may apply a surface template to it just to kind of give us some depth. Um, that's going to be time dependent if I remember to do it. Um, but then just also having these 3D element tools. Um, so we can create elements by a slope. So creating a 3D by a slope from another 3D element, creating a 3D element by a volume or uh, using the plan by 3D element, which can take a 3D graphic, 3D element and convert it into a 2D horizontal geometry and a active associated profile. Um, and we can do that in a lot of cases, when we have maybe a linear feature for a roadway and we need to break it down into, you know, it's, it's in the, it's a 3D linear elements in our model, but we want to break it out. We want to have horizontal geometry, we want to have profile geometry. Um, and then just using some CAD tools. Okay, so just placing smart lines, uh, manipulating those lines. And uh, these drawing tools can be used in conjunction with the geometry and the terrain tools to create our civilized elements. So I can go in and place some geometry, um, and then I can go back in and assign a feature definition to it, bringing in my civil model.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.